How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the, our second live stream. Um, we're really excited. We're here with Tim Newman. Who hey, guys. An amazingly talented chef, and he's curated this custom menu uh, for our wood fired oven. It's awfully kind. Uh, has ver some very Australian tones to it, I think. It certainly does. Um, so, yeah, we're uh, just follow along. We'll be reading your questions um, on Facebook and YouTube. So, if you have any questions for Tim, just ask him and we'll read them off to him and he'll answer them. Um, and yeah, he's going to let you know everything you need to get started right now and to cook along if you, if you are cooking along from home. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. I'll turn it over to Tim and enjoy the show. Cool, man. All right. Thank good luck. You. All right. Guys, um, welcome from wherever you're streaming from in the world. My name is Timothy Newman. Uh, you're joining us in Napa Valley uh, Kitchen Collective. To be, to be specific, um, it's such an honor to be um, hosting a masterclass for you uh, using these lovely Forno Piombo ovens, which I've been extremely fortunate to, to use. I hope that um, you, got, you, know, you might have joined this by way of um, client, you know, being a client of Tony's, whether you are or not, whether you have one of these beautiful ovens at home. I'm very jealous of you if you, if you do. Um, but we're going to actually uh, recommend some tips about how you can recreate this if you don't have a 700 degree oven. Um, we've got a, a, a plethora of ingredients which we're going to um, go through. I'm going to, going to, to introduce those to you. I, I encourage you to please uh, get interactive with this experience. I think it's an amazing opportunity for you guys to ask questions. Um, I'm not a, I don't want to say a, um, a world-class chef, but you know you have the opportunity to ask someone who um, can answer your questions today. Uh, if I don't know, I'm going to make them make them up. Um, we are cooking uh, shrimp on the barbie, uh, which is a, a famous uh, quote by um, Crocodile Dundee or Paul Hogan, uh, really kind of summarising Australian culture and cuisine. If you're if you're um, if you're unfamiliar with Australian cuisine, it's, it's heavily uh, Italian-inspired. Uh, we have an enormous Greek and Mediterranean uh, migration or population. We have uh, Asian, we have Thailand, Chinese um, forms a big uh, percentage of our population in Melbourne, particularly where I'm from. So without any further ado, um, I'm going to introduce our ingredients and what we're cooking today, which is these beautiful king shrimp or king prawns. Um, these come in from from Florida. They're a nice jumbo jumbo shrimp, uh, which if you're a chef you'll understand they're U10, so they are nice and meaty. They smell um, smell fresh as anything. I can't wait to get them. We're going to go over um, what you should look for for freshness, what you, should, um, what you should ask, how you should buy them. I encourage you to, throughout this um, interactive experience, ask me questions, but what I want to really emphasize is that um, you know I'm doing this for you, but I also want to acknowledge that um, in this very, very sad and unfortunate time that we're going through, uh, there are a lot of small businesses who are struggling, not just here in Napa Valley, but right around the world with something that you and I are all um, dealing with and facing. It's, a, it's an unprecedented, unprecedented time, um, but I hope this opportunity can just you know, raise your spirits, uh, encourage you to cook, cook well, eat well, be healthy and get through this um, all together. All right, but um, get out, support your, support your uh, local businesses. I've got these from one of my favorite uh, seafood purveyors here in, in Napa Valley called Osprey. Uh, if you're a local, uh, I hope you know. If you don't know, Osprey is on Highway 29. They are an incredibly talented, very generous um, bunch of professionals who, who bring in seafood from right across the United States. Together with our lovely shrimp, um, I've gone and take the liberty of get some scallops. Um, please hit up the live feed, hit up the Q&A. Um, let us know what you have at home. If you haven't been able to get out and get some shrimp or some prawns, uh, tell me what you have. And I'm going to give you some practical tips about how you can create a really authentic and really beautiful um, take on whatever ingredients you have. I've got some lovely jumbo shrimp that come in from, um, from the east coast of the United States, which are lovely and rich. We're going to get a nice crust on the top, so I can't wait to show you that. Um, I thought Tony would be uh, joining us for a, joining me for a glass of wine, but I'm going to kick this uh, off with a little drop of Australian wine. Um, we're really fortunate to have been given this lovely bottle of Riesling from Treasury Wine Estates, but um, Penfolds is a beautiful Australian iconic producer in the Napa Valley, uh, sorry, in Australia rather and uh, couldn't think of a better wine to be enjoying. So go and get yourself a glass of wine and let's get cooking. Together with the shrimp, we're cooking some Brussels sprouts, which I have right here. 
um, in season. It's getting towards the end of the season, so I'm going to I'm going to cut the tips off. Just shed the outer layer of the Brussels sprouts. Here we go. Tell me, Tony, have we got some viewers? Who have we got checked in? No. Where are you tuning in from? I want to hear. Uh, I wish I had the Q&A right in front of me. But I hope we've got some friends, some, hopefully some family. Hello to uh, my, my family if you're watching. watching. My dad's watching. Hi, Dad, Doris. Pleasure to have you, How you doing? tune in. Good, mate. Melted our GoPro. Oh, there you go. Shit. So what I didn't emphasize, guys, one of our main um, and probably most important ingredients uh, we're using today uh, is hand sanitizer. <laughs> so very, very important and rest assured that I've uh, sanitized appropriately and none of you are eating my uh, dish, so you're all going to be safe. Who likes Brussels sprouts? I hope that all of you do. Um, we're going to transform them today into a really, really um, amazing spin on these somewhat, some might argue, pretty boring ingredients, but I'm going to show you how to really give them some pizzazz, uh, some real attitude, some character. If you've got the oven at home, I want you to fire it up. You could either bake them if you're um, a bit more health conscious, you can use a little bit less oil. We're gonna get a little bit of a, a nice crust on the bottom of the Brussels sprout. So we are going to use a little bit of oil today. But it's the end of the world, we're a bit more lenient. I've got a trash can, y'all. Oh, Taylor, go on. No, all right, they're going in the fire. Best thing about having a wood fire on, guys. And they already smell fucking beautiful. Get rid of everything that you need? Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna put these aside, however, actually, sorry, we're gonna just take a little bit of, take a second to slice these quite large ones in half. All right, we're going to get to some Tony? questions here. Please, I've been waiting to I'm see who's crazy. checked in, who's who's tuned in. All right. David we're at. Ortega. Hey, boy. Tim is the man. Oh, David, shucks. Great to have you tune in, man. I hope you and Christine have gone out and got some produce. Michael Stubelt, who's a member at Kitchen Collective, says oh. hi, Tim. Hey, Mike. Vince wants to know where you get prawns in Napa. Oh, great question. Um, I really would like to give a shout out to a couple of the businesses, and, and I, I apologize for those of you who, who do pick up. I'm going to mention a couple of brands throughout the whole cooking, um, cooking experience today. I'm going to shout out a couple of businesses which I um, have been fortunate and who have very, very uh, generously donated um, to this initiative and Tony's initiative. Today we're really, I mean, if you're not informed, if you're not uh, aware, this, this whole uh, curation of chefs, uh, including myself, was brought together by Forno Piomba, the owner of, and builder of these gorgeous ovens. And we're really trying to shine some light um, on you know, the fact that the hospitality industry is, is facing a crisis, uh, as, as is the whole um, the world. But a lot of chefs here in Napa Valley um, and all over are out of work because of the slowdown in hospitality. Um, so we are really supporting uh, local businesses. So I want to mention Osprey, and thank you, Adam, for these lovely shrimp. Um, Osprey is on um, corner of uh, Highway 29 and and Wine Valley Drive, over north of Napa, uh, north of Trancas. So check them out. They've, got, they've supplied our uh, king shrimp and our scallops today. So awesome. There you go. Perfect. There you go. All right, we're gonna get a GoPro. See if All right, how are we going on fire? How are we going on temperature? Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. 
what's the next step? Good. So we've got a good bit of heat. Um, it's really, really important when you're firing up these ovens, if you have one at home, um, you do so a couple, of a couple of hours ahead of time, and, and Tony can chime in here. Uh, this oven has been on since what time this afternoon? Uh, we started it pretty early. I think we started it at... 12, 11? Yeah. Yep. Unnecessarily early. <laughs> okay. Like, just to be sure. But yeah, I would I would have started it two hours before, probably. It's a recommendation. Two hours ahead of time, um, we're starting and, and check into Tony's feed, which is fantastic and a really good resource for learning how to use these ovens. Uh, using some nice light timber, we're building some heat. And we want to do that towards the front, uh, the opening of the oven, because you need, and it's essential that you're getting oxygen. You don't want to start the fire at the back. It's, um, it will have a, a more difficult time taking light and, and building heat. We want to build it at the, the beginning or the opening of the oven where the oxygen is essential in um, getting a nice combustion um, of the wood logs. So we're probably rattling around uh, four, 500 degrees Celsius right now and we're going to ramp it up uh, with a little extra wood. Stacey Taylor? Stacey Taylor? Yeah. Woohoo! Guys! Hi Stacey, I miss you. Hope you and Josh have tuned in. Josh, you need to be a better chef, mate. I couldn't do my uh, best friend duties without uh, encouraging you to get cooking, get in the kitchen, get healthier. <laughs> I'm just kidding, mate. All right, we're gonna start to push it back. I, there is a significant amount of heat roaring in this oven. Uh, so with a, uh, a steel, br uh, steel brush, All right, where are we starting? We're gonna get a, um, a dressing for these uh, Brussels sprouts together. And it's a really, I, I, I would love to credit one of my, um, a dear friend and, and a, a fellow uh, chef here in Napa Valley who um, is, is like myself, um, experiencing lower than usual work um, in the industry. But um, this is one of his recipes. Logan, if you're watching, g'day mate. Um, we're using honey, sherry vinegar, and hot sauce. Um, and I'd just like to provide some alternatives if you haven't got these um, in your pantry. Hot sauce is pretty, um, I mean, you can use any kind of hot sauce you like. Uh, we're using a Louisiana style here because my executive chef here at, um, at my kitchen here, or our kitchen, uh, is from Louisiana. She's an incredible chef. Uh, we're using this, which has a bit more of a, a tang to it. Um, she uses that in you know, her seafood broils and um, goodness, anything from polenta to a really light, but super zingy taste. So if you can get a hot sauce with a little bit of um, vibrance and, and a little bit of acidity, that's perfect because it's going to, you really, you're offsetting the acidity and the heat with sweetness and a really nice character from the, the sherry vinegar. So let's build this dressing. I've got a little saucepan and you can do this over the stove um, or I'm, I'm simply using, I'm, the main reason I'm going to heat it up is because my honey is a little bit firm. So we're using about half a cup of honey, and that measurement is only that way is because I'm going to make a little bit of extra uh, for this, and you can use whatever you need to for this recipe, or however many Brussels sprouts you have. So I've got about half a cup, or two nice big heap teaspoons, oh, sorry, tablespoons. To that we're going to add about two tablespoons worth, um, that might be a little over but that's okay. So two tablespoons of hot sauce, about a tablespoon, two or two tablespoons, about a tablespoon of sherry vinegar and you can substitute uh, balsamic vinegar, preferably golden or um, you know, a lighter balsamic vinegar. And we'll heat that up, we'll just get the, the honey melted and all those flavours integrating together. So do that over um, a, a 
a hob or a, um, a stove top if you have it. Can I get rid of that? Okay. Any other questions, folks? Tony? So one of uh, Rachel says she... Oh. Get in here. So the honey is starting to melt, you're getting really nice. Oh my Rachel God, I wish you could smell this. this tonight. Go Rachel. Power on, girl. Um, I'm really, really glad uh, for those of you who have, have uh, committed to this inter uh, interactive experience, gone out and got the ingredients. Um, sh send, send the photos in. I encourage you to please uh, send the photos to, to Tony or, or Forno Piombo Ovens via social media. I would personally love to see them. I'll, I'll share them on my um, website. All right, so this could be done days ahead. And this is a dressing once the honey is melted. It, it shouldn't firm too much after becoming a liquid. But we're, and it will store uh, perfectly in the pantry or the fridge, uh, prefer preferably probably the fridge, for goodness, um, you know, a month, a month or two. It's really just honey, honey and acidity, or sugar and acidity, two things that really um, create stability uh, and, and shelf life in any ingredient. Let's take a look at these jumbo shrimp. All right. Good opportunity to check in and hand sanitize. What's that? Vicky! Hope you and the girls are having a nice evening, nice weekend. Dusty? Dusty? All right, uh, I actually have got a different board here. Using uh, seafood folks or any kind of meat, uh, you should be using ideally a different, very, very important actually using a different um, chopping board for any kind of meat, and a different one again for seafood, and a different one again for vegetables. So I'm gonna use, this is my seafood uh, chopping board, all right? And with these, we're just gonna split them down the back and it's a technique called butterflying, uh, and it's just gonna allow a bit more surface area. We're gonna smear it with a nice um, healthy teaspoon, perhaps, of of, of butter, a garlic butter, which I'm going to show you how to put together. And then we're going to put them fa um, op or flat side down or butterfly side down uh, on a nice hot griddle. And it's going to get some nice mean uh, lines on our shrimp. And this is, a, this is a preparation that I hold very dear to me because uh, this is a very classic um, uh, Christmas time preparation shrimp. Um, Dad, I love that. <laughs> awesome. Um, Dad, hi again. Um, Dad loves seafood, and, and by way of um, that introduction, I, I love seafood. It's a big, big tradition um, in, in, in Australia, right across the country, uh, on Christmas Day, uh, which obviously, uh, if you're not necessarily thinking about it, Christmas is at summertime. So we, we sit outside with a beer at 11 a.m. in the morning or a glass of wine um, and, and get into the, the freshly boiled shrimp or, um, or shrimp from the supermarket nice aioli or Thousand Island dressing. But this just takes your shrimp to the next level. So we're splitting it right down the back and we're leaving the head on. We don't really want to go into the, um, into the head too much because it will create um, a bit of, it's the nicest way to say it, uh, juices. <laughs> we don't want your juices going everywhere and we, we ultimately we're just doing this for presentation. So we're splitting it down in the back and just give way to a little bit of extra and then splitting it this way. And that allows you to get out the poop line. <laughs> okay, so putting those on a nice little sheet tray. We're out my shit trays, here we go. 
So you're slicing it um, pretty much virtually right through, but we don't want to split the back shell because that's really what is um, holding it and giving it some integrity to hold up in the oven or whatever your vessel you're cooking in. So we're leaving the back uh, the shell intact, but we're going down through the underside of the shrimp. So we're going um, through the legs first and through the, the belly, if you will, um, again, and holding it intact for a, uh, a method or a technique you call butterflying. So I think uh, what we'll do for our, our Patreon members, um, yes. If you're on Zoom, if you're if you're one of our Patreon followers and you've been following this on Zoom, uh, go ahead and turn your audio and your uh, turn your video on, no audio, on in the Zoom meeting, and we'll start uh, we'll start um, zooming you in with t with Tim here. All right. And he can critique <laughs> cooking. Oh yeah, please show me where you're at. Show me what you got. I've got a couple extra ingredients, guys, and if we do have time, I'm going to show you a, another salad. Um, time time dependent, of course. So I've got some bell peppers. If you've got some bell peppers, uh, get them out of the fridge. So you're on with uh, Kevin yep. David right now. Hey, Kev. Let me turn him up. Let me turn you up, Kev. You got us? I see your apron. Are you in the kitchen? How are you, my friend? You had my pizza? I know. Yep. One sec, uh, your audio is really low. I'm not sure why, because it just was really high. Is your mic? Is there any... Let me see if I can turn. Oh, I, th I better know. Give me one sec. I think it's my. So the bigger, the better for these. Um, these are, to give you some comparison, the size um, of my hand, which is really, really nice. Um, I would portion out roughly three of these uh, per person, I think, which ooh, would provide around, um, I'll use both, uh, both, me both measurements, probably about three to four ounces of, of, of protein, which is a good amount of meat for um, any given sitting. Um, and it will, it'll fill you up. We've got some nice fibrous vegetables, so I don't think that it's gonna be a too light a meal. And they're fucking expensive, so, sorry. Um, they are expensive, so you know, three per person is, is adequate, unless they're slightly smaller than, consider about three to four ounces or about 100 grams of, of protein, or 100 grams of meat. So, Ke so Kevin was saying he ordered our pizza oven about a year ago, and they, he's just about to get it now. So oh, fantastic. It, so you're, are you cooking along, Kevin, or are you just, are you just, uh, you're watching? Getting excited about my Getting excited. All right, what, brother. You got some questions for Tim? Oh, you got a, is that a margarita? No, what do you no, got there? Nice what do you got? Nice, oh, okay. Uh, my nest knife is less than sharp. First. Oh, a little, um, little white Bordeaux. Yeah. Uh, sorry, nice. Bordeaux. Burgundy, rather? Yeah, white Burgundy. Beautiful. So what do you got for Tim? Well, cheers to you, my friend. You got one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. There you go. What are you having there, Kev? Today we did a chicken uh, valentine, so I deep boned the entire chicken. Yum. Then I stuffed it with uh, prosciutto, pine nuts. Oh my gosh. Man. Yeah. Peppers, and where are you tuning in from, Kev? And where what? St. Louis, Missouri. Missouri. Wow. I'm so honored. Thank you for um, joining us a little bit later on your side, right? Yeah. All right, Kev. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll swap back over to you. We'll see if there anyone else is on the Zoom. Thanks for tuning in, Kev. Tracy, Hi, Tracy. Like my lovely mother-in-law. Okay. So, uh, as well, so, okay, come on in here. Uh, Moses, my friend. So we're splitting it, we're getting the knife, peak of the knife in um, and not feeling it go through the back shell. Then cutting it right down the back and then just where the head and body connect, we'll split that because the shell um, doesn't allow for a nice butterfly. So just a, a very, very short, small butterfly. 
and then we're opening it up like that. And that's where you make way to extract the gastrointestinal tract <laughs> is the nicest mm -hmm. way to say. All right, so we're gonna put those aside and we're gonna get started on a nice garlic butter, uh, which we're gonna smear um, in that little cavity and it's just gonna flavor that sweet meat uh, of those shrimp. Raining here in Napa, guys. I hope you've got better weather uh, wherever you're tuning on in from. All right. Any more questions, guys? Keep them coming, please. Okay. Let's, uh, this is gonna come together pretty quickly, so I'm um, blinking, blinking it'll be over, so I'm trying to have some fun here. Um, let's get on with the butter. I've, um, I've actually got some butter here which has been softening um, if you have the wood fire oven or leave it out at um, room temperature for a little bit. We've got our dressing here. It's probably too hot now. <laughs> Live stream, guys. It's not always fun and games. We've probably heated it up a little bit too much. We almost uh, caramelized, which I'm going to run with. I'm going to allow it to cool down a little bit. It's actually smelling absolutely delicious. So there you go. I'm changing my recipe from now on. I'm actually going to caramelize the honey, let it cool down a little bit, um, and then we're going to crisp up the, the Brussels sprouts and uh, throw it into the bowl of that caramelized honey, um, sherry vinegar, and, and hot sauce. All right, put those aside for a second. Where's my butter? Little bowl, I'm gonna scoot down here, my friend. Okay. So a little butter, and this is such a, a beautiful little uh, preparation that you can do any time of year, not just when you're cooking shrimp. Um, if you're cooking uh, lobster tails, it is really nice. This is going to be a seafood, um, this is going to be a butter for a seafood preparation. Um, and it's a really, really good tip I'm going to give you to roll it up, put it in the, uh, the freezer, okay, label it, and uh, you can pour it at any, at any time and slice a nice little slab of butter, uh, which you can serve over. Um, well, I almost, I, I, I said seafood, but how it would be really, really beautiful over a nice steak and you can just let it melt once it's come off the griddle. So we're going to put the butter in here and this is about, let's say half a cup. I think I told you guys to get a uh, half a pound and you can most certainly do that. Again, if you're putting it in the freezer, uh, it's really not going to go bad. So. So a nice room temperature butter, and we, uh, ideally, uh, most of us, we want um, to be nice and pliable because we're going to mix some garlic into that. That's looking absolutely brilliant. All right, let's chop some garlic. Um, this is a good little tip. Uh, if you're one that likes getting in, getting out of the kitchen, um, I'll give you a couple of tips about how you can be, be a bit more efficient. Um, whenever you're cutting garlic, I think if we if we spent the amount of time in the kitchen, in a professional kitchen, peeling the amount of garlic that we go through, our wages would be double. And what that converts to you at home listening, um, peeling garlic is a waste of time. Uh, it's just it's tedious. Often, if you buy it in a, in a bulb, some of the little the cloves can be absolutely minuscule, like this one. Um, so we want the nice bulbs, and you can get that by um, buying, I've found a really, really nice brand, who are a California um, brand of, of garlic. I'm not giving them a plug, but um, what they do is they peel the garlic for you, and you can buy it in the store um, pre-peeled. Pre and it, goodness me, it does. It saves you 10 minutes each cook. That's um, you know an hour every week. That's goodness knows how much extra time you have to get back to what you love doing. So don't peel garlic, get it pre-peeled. Don't use a crusher, don't be an, an idiot. Don't buy a little garlic crusher. Um, 
get back to basics and knife skills. Um, squash it, it extracts the oils from the garlic. Oops. Um, so we, we squashed it and provide a nice little surface area to run through and finally shave it one way. Garrett, what's up mate? Pleasure to have you. Um, alternatively, um, make it even quicker for yourself. And um, I know that I don't do it myself um, because I think a lot of extra flavor comes through fresh garlic. Uh, it retains that nice, uh, nice bitterness if you have, have fresh garlic. Uh, but get a little pot, get a little um, glass jar of pre-minced garlic from the supermarket and that'll work really beautifully here. And there's probably some variation of uh, garlic butter that you can buy straight off the shelf. So have a little look um, and that obviously will save you even more time, but it's going to be more expensive. So uh, think smart. Um, these little tips will save you money uh, in the long run. We're probably, if you can buy, if you can buy any little glass of, uh, of uh, or any little um, packet of garlic butter, I guarantee you'll probably make 10 times more for half the cost if you do it yourself. So take on the challenge. I challenge you to do that. And one thing I want to mention um, is, is, so I do some, I've been doing a bit of content creation um, at home. If, you, if you're interested in checking out um, another variation of, of live cooking or interactive cooking, um, my fiance Taylor and I have, have begun doing some of these cooking demonstrations uh, at our own house. And you can tune into chefTimNewman.com. That's uh, sorry, chefTimNewman.com. Oh my God, uh, Chef Tim Newman on Instagram. That's N-E-U-M-A-N-N. -N, Chef Tim Newman. And I'm gonna I give you tips on on how to be more efficient, but also a lot of the feedback that's come from our um, viewers has been you're cooking really nice things. What's well, all good? But um, I want to know more basics, uh, and I'm gonna give you some basics here, but. One of the most fundamental things that I can recommend to any new chef or anyone trying to get more involved in the kitchen, um, you know, find their feet, get more nimble and more confident in the kitchen, is a couple of things, and I'm just going to finish this off and then I'll, I'll tell you. But go out and spend some money on some equipment, and I'll, I'll write a list for you, um, some bare basics that you need in your kitchen to make your life in the kitchen a bit more of a more efficient and, and go on. Oh, so... so. Colleen has a bone-in pork shoulder. Ooh, yeah. She wants to know how how would you prepare and cook that? How big is it? Colleen, how big is your is your uh, pork shoulder? And then also, David asked about the conventional oven. Yeah. Uh, what temp you'd be Johnny, cooking this at? Oh, get in the shot. I probably can hear it. Okay. It's all right. Six feet, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so I've got a half a half cup of butter. I've got uh, four garlic cloves. So can you repeat the question? Um, yeah. What temperature we'd have for the conventional? What Is temp you would be in conventional oven for what you're doing? Okay. You could go. You could do it on the in the oven, or you could do it on a stove top. Um, at the end of the day, I'm, 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 I think what's really really nice is going to really. Um, liven up this dish is if we get some nice grill marks on our shrimp um, and for that I know you not all of you are going to have a nice griddle pan but if you do get it out right now um, and that's going to be the best uh, cooking surface for this um, to really add some add some serious attitude and character to the shrimp so get your griddle pan out um, to answer the question Fahrenheit I'd say 400 430 degrees Celsius we want a nice rapid um, did I say Fahrenheit? Why I said Celsius. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, 450 degrees, let's just say 450 degrees uh, Fahrenheit uh, or 220 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's nice rapid heat, gonna get some nice uh, color uh, on, the outside, on the outside if you're using the oven. If you have a pan, you can even do it in the pan. We're gonna lay these flat in a little bit of butter um, and they're gonna cook literally in 30 seconds to a minute, okay? Pork quicker. shoulders, nine pounds. Oh my gosh, okay. Whew. Um, it needs low and slow cooking, pork shoulder. It's got a lot of fat 
in it. It's a really, really beautiful cut for uh, what I've just, actually go on, um, what was her name? Colleen. Colleen Delling, go on to my Instagram, Chef Tim Newman. I've actually just made a pulled pork. Um, it, it, it's an overnight cook, or what do we do? Six hours or eight hours is a sweet spot for really breaking down the fat allowing the, um, the flavors to infuse. And I've got some, um, some spices that you might consider using for the pork shoulder. So ch jump onto my uh, Instagram and check that out. If you've got a slow cooker at home, a crock pot, or um, some kind of um, you know, heavy bottom uh, deep dish uh, pot, get it in there with some braising liquid. I would definitely, definitely recommend um, adding some broth or a stock. Um, that can be bought in a carton if you have the luxury of making it at home that it was going to amplify the dish even more um, but broth to make sure it's nice and moist um, pork shoulder has its own fat which will render out but um, it's kept even more moist uh, and you know the pulled pork or barbecued pork uh, with some broth uh, maybe a little apple cider vinegar um, and some barbecue sauce if you really want to add some serious depth and sweetness and that nice smoky flavor so i hope that's answered your question colleen what else are we having? What else? Uh, what are you serving with it, Colleen? And real quick, I just want to remind if you're watching us and you're a Patreon member and you're in on the Zoom uh, video call, jump back on because we had about seven people on there. Seventy? Uh, and so oh, about seven. seven people were on there. <laughs> so we're minutes. more than happy to, to Zoom everyone in. But everyone okay, the, get in here, guys. So Here's a, little, uh, a tip for getting some earlier, nice. Um, and we'll get you going. Fine diced fine diced uh, chilies or um, peppers. So we're using uh, just a red chili here. So the thinner the better, um, so you're not getting you know, big hits and wax of um, heat. So the finer the better for this. So it distributes really, really nicely through the butter. So you're slicing it one way first and we've just sliced that uh, nice cheek off the pepper. So yeah, I'll do another one, I probably won't use it, but. Slice the white off. Slice the white off by getting nice and close as you can to the flesh. And you want to uh, slice that white bit out because it's really not going to add um, a whole lot of flavor. It's just going to add a bit of bitterness. And you want it to be red. That's where you're going for you're getting that nice, um, as well as color, you're getting a really nice color right through the butter. So the red is what you're striving for. Say hi to Marita. Hey, Marita. My biggest fan. I, I still owe you a tomato sauce, uh, which is coming in hot soon, I promise. And then we're going back. So we've rotated those little fine juliennes. And then we're going to finally. Roy what up, Roy? My bachelor, my, uh, one of my groomsmen. I was meant to get uh, married next week guys believe it or not i was uh, uh if you ask anyone uh, how the coronavirus has impacted them my fiance and i will get meant to get married next week we're meant to have um goodness almost 100 people coming in from right across the world um and that was cancelled so next year roy and family and dad and everyone mum gonna have a good time 12 months so if I'm a, if it's any inspiration, guys, stay positive. Um, you know, things happen. Uh, we're all in this together. So, anyway, we're gonna get the chili in. You don't need to use chili if you're uh, if you're not uh, partial to heat. But I think it's really really adds some serious kick to this um, dish. And that's what one teaspoon, really, t maybe two teaspoons. Say hi to Derek. Derek Belju. Yeah. What's up, brother? Another one of my groomsmen. I know, we're actually meant to be in Tahoe right now having a bachelor party, so probably a good thing we're not. Uh, <laughs> I can be here cooking with you guys, being a le lot less um, disruptive to society. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so um, the last ingredient we're going to add to this uh, is parsley. Uh, this, could be f uh, this is continental parsley. It could be f flat leaf parsley. Um, really, we're just going to hack through it, get it nice and fine. Um, Derek, I still want to see that, uh, those, what was he cooking? Pasta dough. He's cooking a pasta dough. I want to see your photos, mate. Uh, I, I called you out. 
said you didn't want to share it. I'm fostering a community around cooking, guys, uh, because it is something I, I hold near and dear to me. Um, I love encouraging, uh, inspiring people, motivating people to get uh, in the kitchen. I think it's one of the funnest, most uh, enjoyable things that you can learn to do in life is, is to cook, and particularly right now when we have such a shortage of so many different ingredients and all of your fa favorite canned foods and frozen foods and all of your favorite restaurants are shut. Now's the time to cook, guys. So I'm, again, this, I mean, this is, goes back to why we're doing this. So that's a really nice texture. Let's get it in. We'll probably use two tablespoons of that. I don't know what to do with this. No, I'm just kidding. Ah! All right. Let's get into this gorgeous, sexy butter. Can you give us a look of it? Yes, I would love to. Nearly knock my Brussels sprouts off. Uh, to that, actually, I might add a little bit of pepper. I think it's good to season everything. Not too much, because we've got a lot of flavor in there already. Um, if you want to if you want to take this to Asia uh, and, you know, take a bit of a little culinary journey um, through Asia, then add some ginger to this, add some lemongrass to this butter. It's going to really add this nice um, zing. It's going to add a nice freshness and a little oriental flavor. So I think it'll go absolutely beautifully with some ginger, ginger butter. More. Uh, or some cilantro would be really, really nice. Okay, which one? Here we go. Here. Um, so we're going to get the butter incorporated, get the garlic beautifully incorporated. Hey, Ali. All right, you can see that. Looks good. Thank you. It smells good too. Mmm, yeah. garlic. Thanks, Ali. What happened? Feels like it's on it. Yeah. Can you say? All right. So I'm going to give you the tip now. I'm going to put a little aside because we're obviously going to use some. With my little dish. Uh, is this a salted butter? No, we use unsalted butter. So you can buy unsalted butter and add just a little bit of salt, obviously, um, because it's really going to be the only salt that you add to the prawns. You're seasoning it all in one. If you've got, if you bought salted butter, then don't add it. I've got unsalted butter, so I'm just adding to a quarter of a teaspoon. It's not a big portion of butter, so. That's going to be really, really important. Ooh. I'm going to get some uh, saran wrap or glad wrap, whatever you call it in your part of the world. Um, this is a little preparation we're going to roll out, you know, a uh, foot long, tw 12 inches or 30 centimeters. Bread and taste it. Do you want a piece of bread, <laughs> Moses? <laughs> it looks good. Tell them about the good. bread. Yeah, um, I've I've uh, decided to use, which I'm going to champion later, and dipping it in some beautiful olive oil and um, dip the remainder of our lovely prawn shrimp juice in. Hold on. Uh, it's a Royal Artisan um, Bakers or Royal Artisan Bakery. Um, it's a local guy named Kyle who makes beautiful heritage grain, um, super artisan uh, baguettes. He makes kumut, um, it's a, an age, ancient grain. Um, he makes exquisite uh, sourdoughs, and he sells them from Napa. And you can actually uh, you can actually go onto his website, and he's 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 offered su subscription service, so a monthly subscription service to um, to get his bread delivered to your door. So I couldn't think of a better time to 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 do that and take advantage of that. So um, if you love bread, check out Royal Artisan Breads. All right, so we're, we're, I'm trying to roll it without getting my hands involved here uh, into a little log. Touch it at home if you're clean hands. All right, so we're rolling it up. I'm gonna form a little log. Now we're offering it to 
first said Tim's a legend. Who? Noah Alfred. Noah. I don't know who you are, Noah. Maybe I do. I'm so sorry. Um, so, what we're doing. Hi, Noah. So we're rolling it in, trying to compact it as much as you can. You're really trying to, because um, this is going to create a nice little slab of butter. And what you can do is roll it like this. And that, my lovely friends, will store super well in the freezer for, um, for goodness, years maybe, um, or months at least. It probably won't last three weeks um, if you're cooking out. Okay, I hate to destroy this, but we are going to use it, of course. So let's go ahead and use half. But Thanks, Ali. So that there um, is all of the flavor that's incorporated into the butter, and it's going to be a dream um, on shellfish. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, you know, beef. But we want this butter today. Got a little dish. Come on down here. All right. So real quick, we uh, so it looks like the Zoom link wasn't working for everybody. So oh no. <laughs> so if you uh, so if you head back to our Patreon homepage, we have a new link. It says new live stream link or new Zoom link. Just click that, and you'll come back into the Zoom meeting, and then we'll get you on with Tim. Oh, it smells good over here. Ooh, it does. <laughs> All right. How's the Brussels sprout sauce? Looking? Brussels sprout sauce is looking. Almost burnt myself. Thankfully, it's cooled down really, really nicely. It's, it's it's thickened a little bit. I'm going to taste it. I always try to keep uh, a little collection of spoons around. It's my kill kit. If you don't have a kill kit, get a kill kit. It's, it's cool. Um, to keep all my little goodies in here, I have a little collection of spoons and knives and. One of the super fun things to do is go out to a, um, an antique store and, and rummage through old pieces of antique uh, cutlery and find yourself some some fun. cutlery that, that suits your personality. Um, so I've got some spoons already in the Bain-Marie or in the Bane, but I'm just going to use a little bit here. So let's taste it. Oh, the spiciness, the, the heat, you can dial it back. I'm going to keep it exactly like that. It's got a little bit of, um, you know, the sweetness, the, the little kind of little bitterness and, and sweetness from the dry aged sherry vinegar, uh, which go out to your, um, your local de delicatessen and try to find something of, of that sort or get it on Amazon. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this one. It's from Spain. Um, <laughs> but. Try. You can, <laughs> of course. Yeah. All right, we've got a uh, right. vinaigre. vinaigre de Jerez. De Jerez. De Jerez. Vinaigre de Jerez. De Jerez. So there you go, product of Spain, guys. Yeah. Get some beautiful dry aged sherry, add it to your pantry. We'll pay you dividends. Let's work smart, get some sanitizer. Also in my kit here, it's gonna get wet. Yeah, um, this is a handmade um, leather knife roll, uh, which which is made and crafted in Tasmania um, by Mac, um, who is a, a, a small humble leather store um, and producer by the same name, Mac, I believe, Mac. Um, I don't know exactly how much it was a very, very nice present from my fiance. So um, get down to Tasmania and pick up yourself a knife roll. Otherwise, look for one online. Get yourself a brush. I've got two different variations. Uh, you might have a different one at home. A really nice uh, brush is super, super fun thing to have um, in the kitchen uh, and not just for you know, baking or you know, egg wash on a pasta or ravioli. Or um, It can be a really fun presentation and, and tune into my um, clips on, on Instagram. and. And I'll show you a couple of techniques about how you can um, spread and, and paint um, a nice little puree across the plate and really amplify and elevate your, your dining at home. So, All right, let's get into the butter. 
and we're just going to get it into the, um, the little cavity here. You can probably just use a spoon and just put it in there and it's going to melt. All right, so we're just putting it in there. We're not really worrying about the head. The head's just going to gain some color. We're just not going to eat it. Um, unless you do, that's kind of weird. Um, I think my cousin back in Australia um, pranked me when I was about 10 years old. So I learned the hard way. Um, if you've got some young kids around, you can prank them by saying, oh, yeah, 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 you can actually eat the head. And I almost choked to death on a, on a prawn shell. I'm actually going to um, change it up and I'm going to grab a little teaspoon, which I think is going to hold us a little bit. Um, it's going to be a bit more clean and it's going to be a bit more efficient for us and easier to clean up. So get a little teaspoon and just spoon a little bit of butter in the cavity. Not too much, I'm adding about half a, half a teaspoon to each. And as, you, as it cooks, you can decide if you want a little bit more. If you're cooking over a grill um, or a barbecue, you will lose a little bit of this flavor. It's gonna melt through the, uh, the grate. So uh, you might decide to have a little pot of this, um, which you can heat up, you can melt, and you can baste on the shrimp as Did it's you cooking. Those you could, um, I'll, t I'll show you a little technique for cooking scallops. The question was, uh, can you use this butter for scallops? And, and the answer is you probably could. I'm going to show you a really elegant preparation for um, scallops. I think the way I'm going to show you to cook scallops um, in a hot cast iron pan straight out of the uh, wood fire oven, I think the parsley that we've added, I think the garlic that we've added is going to burn instead of um, because the way I cook scallops. Adding a little heat, keep it rattling. Use my hand sanitizer, sign of the times. Who's made the butter at home, guys? I want to hear if you've put together this lovely little butter and you're literally spooning it into your shrimp as we speak. That would have given me some serious satisfaction and uh, get me going. So we didn't use as much butter as we thought, but this might be a, a nicer portion, perfect portion for the amount of shrimp you're cooking. We've cooked... No, uh, Six nice big jumbo shrimp, and we probably have gone through half of it. So nice for a, a good dozen of them. All right. Let's line these back up. Okay, let's get our um, cast iron griddle into the oven heating up. I'll show you a good little indication. It's almost cold now. I actually put it in before, getting it as close to the fire um, as possible. I'm going to leave it there with a little bit of oil on it. I'm using a canola and olive oil blend. Um, uh, olive oil is a, is a very precious uh, fat. Its, its structure by nature um, is very susceptible to burning and it has a slightly lower smoke point than what we want. Um, we're cooking at such a temperature here, if you're cooking at home, 700 degrees Fahrenheit or you know, almost 500 degrees Celsius, um, really no oil is going to stand up. But So, we, I mean, with that said, in, uh, in itself, you don't want to use your precious, expensive olive oil at home. Um, so I'm using a canola and olive oil blend. It's a lot cheaper uh, and it's going to fit the bill for what we're doing. I guarantee that question was going to come in because it's one of my favorite questions uh, at field when we're in the kitchen. So, we can cook scallops first. Tony, would you like some scallops? Yeah. Yes, I hear yes. Okay. And some bread? 
Okay. <laughs> How did I know? I want some bread. He wants some bread as well. Where's my serenity? Okay. So Royal Artisan, thank you, Kyle. This beautiful gift. Not a gift, but gift to our community. So this might be a little uh, preparation you put together as friends arrive. You get a little cheese platter or a little charcuterie, a little meat platter together. Get some yummy bread, get some nice high quality olive oil. Extra virgin, and that's where you want to use your extra virgin olive oil. Um, when you're dressing a salad to serve, and you're not going to heat it up again because this, the extra virgin olive oil is a perfect oil for um, serving at room temperature. You get all of the health properties, you get all of the um, antioxidants, the um, the the goodness from the the natural olives. And one of the most beautiful olive oils that I've come to appreciate is that of uh, Cobram Estate. Cobram Estate are an, um, originally an Australian brand who produce in uh, Boundary Bend in northern northern Victoria, where I'm from. They have also produced um, olives for a number of uh, number of years now in Sacramento, just north of Sacramento, and right down through the San Joaquin Valley in California. So. Keep an eye out for Cobram Estate in this um, very, um, very easy to recognize bottle. Say hi to Rob. Hey Rob. So, I'm going to toast it up. We've used up one of our dishes already. I might run inside and grab some extra dishes. Um, otherwise you can just go like this. Keep it wild. <laughs> okay. With that said, we'll get cooking, guys. I know you, wherever you're from, tuning in, might be getting late. So let's crack on here. Sorry for the, the jokes. <laughs> I have a little look now. This might be on the stove top, or this might be coming out of um, the oven. The perfect indication that we're at a nice uh, temperature for cooking is that we're getting a light steam. It's not smoldering black smoke. Um, we've got a nice little steam, so it's a really nice working temperature for our, our prawns. I'm not going to touch it. One or two. I've actually got some nice little pretty plates. Are you good? Um, You're good. Yeah, we're good. Which are very, very wet now, so I might. Tony, my friend. Yes, sir. Could I trouble you for an extra uh, towel? I won't destroy that plate with my working. All right, let's get on over here. And put it back in. It's already lost a little bit of heat, but it's a good indication that we've got. Yeah, it's fine. So I'll put it back in for a second. We, we really want a nice uh, cooking heat. Prawns are going to cook uh, in an instant. They're really going to take probably 30 seconds to a minute. They're a very delicate meat. These are on the, the, uh, the meatier side, but you know, all in all, the meat is delicate. It doesn't need an extraordinary um, you know, 10 minutes that you might do for a little steak or a pork chop. Um, they're going to take a minute. They're going to be served, ideally, um, medium to well done. You still want a nice little bit of... Um, life in them, if you will. You don't want them to be rubbery. If you cook them too far, they, they start to get really chewy, which is extremely unpleasant. All right, let's get on. Who's getting hungry? Your dad. Dad. Smart ass. <laughs> All right, so we're going to face side down. Actually, you know what? These are going to cook super, super quick. Let's start with our... Uh, Brussels sprouts for us because they're gonna. So for our Brussels sprouts, you're gonna cook a little bit of the canola oil. Get a nice little heat in there. I've used about a, two tablespoons to a quarter cup of oil. We are essentially frying them, but it's gonna really transform them. You're not deep frying them, but you're getting a nice little thick 
uh, golden crust on the bottom. The heat, the ambient heat in the oven um, is going to create a really nice skin or crust on the outside, so they're going to be absolutely divine. Uh, if, you have the, if you have a deep fryer at home and you want to be a little bit more, uh, if you want to live a little, you know, <laughs> use the deep fryer, drop these into the deep fryer for about a minute uh, and they'll, they'll crunch, they'll, they'll, they'll crisp to glorious crunch uh, perfection, crunchy perfection. Let's keep going. Any more questions, folks? So we're going to start with the Brussels sprouts? We're going to start with the Brussels sprouts because even once they're cooked, they're going to, you know, they can be served, you know, not cold, but um, they can be served a little more warm. We want, obviously, the prawns to come out um, and get them to the table, get them nice, there, get them there nice and hot. Uh, new guests and family are going to be enjoying nice warm hot prawns so we're going to save them for last as i said they're not going to take too long to cook it's a great time a glass of wine take a break <laughs> Let's have a little test. I dare say that it's probably not quite hot enough. But you know what, we'll start there because this temperature will increase pretty rapidly. So at least we've got a little sizzle in our hot cast iron pan. And it is a little bit of patience, a labor of love here to get them all face side down. We ch chuck them all straight in, um, so we're gonna land on the edge, some are going to not even get a really good amount of uh, contact on the cast iron. So we're taking a little extra minute to place them all uh, face side down. I'm going to get a nice out uh, crunch and a nice consistent color on all of them. So Tim, uh, any issues doing this with headless prawns? Headless prawns, no. No, uh, I've, I've grabbed those nice big dramatic uh, prawns simply to be uh, provide a nice feature prawn, uh, which is you know obviously a luxury um, and it's something if you, you will need to go to your special probably a specialty seafood supplier to get a nice big feature prawn like that. And I think it, it that drama dramatic um, prawn head just creates a really nice you know talking point at the table if you know what I mean. So definitely definitely could be done with with regular shrimp or even did, frozen shrimp. Did you shrimp. salt the Brussels sprouts before cooking? I haven't, um, because we're going to toss them in uh, a marinade um, that is, you know, it's got the saltiness of the hot sauce. We might add a little uh, salt when it comes out um, of this. So no, I have not to answer the question. So let's go in. I'm pretty, actually pretty proud of myself for uh, getting just the right amount of Brussels sprouts to fill this pan. Yeah, so. right. Actually, I'm keep that. Moses, my brother. Yes. I'll show these lovely folks at home what I'm doing here. So I've got some of the um, the sherry honey hot sauce marinade or dressing. I use about for that quantity. It's not a whole lot. I'll use about. Two tablespoons, two nice tablespoons. Mm. Now, it's out of this world. Try it. Guarantee you'll love it. Uh, the hot sauce. Or the, the honey hot sauce. Add a little uh, oil to the top and you could use spray would be a perfect application here um, for spraying the top and it's going to um, get a really nice crunch on the top. But I'm just going to spray, um, put a little extra oil over the surface. 
You know what? Carol, was it? I think he might be onto, onto a, a good thing. I'm going to add a little salt. Not a whole lot, okay? Keep that in mind. I, didn't, I don't take back what I said about the, the dressing has salt in it and so much flavor uh, that we really don't need too much salt, but just a little bit. Can't go, too, can't go wrong. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay. At the same time, we will put our cast iron back in. And you know what? I'm going to show you the technique for scallops as well. Putting in a little, little baby pan, getting some heat on that. Look at our fire. Is it, a, is it a quite a nice temperature? We could even really ramp it up a whole lot. But I think for what we're doing, we're pretty much at the end of our cook. We will be at the end of our cook in about a minute. So We could preempt that the fire will start to go down. It's pretty cool. Um, if it's a hot day, it'll retain a little extra heat. You know what, I'm going to add just a, one extra little small log. Just to, just to hedge our bets. Small logs. Small logs are um, easier and better for cooking wood fire style um, because the the you know, it just gives you pure control. If you if you wanted just to dial it up, um, you know, 50 degrees Fahrenheit at a time, um, you can add you know one small little uh, kindling bit or a bit of oak. Um, two, if you really want to get it going, that allows you you know um, most control. If you just need to put one extra piece of uh, or one extra pie of pizza um, you can you can do so and you don't need to put on a whole expensive log of wood because wood is expensive if you're if you have one of these at home you'll know that um, you know high quality uh, red oak or um, oak from anywhere does add up in, in, in cost so you know just get small little bits that you can use at your advantage and just rattling up the heat just a little bit extra Let's see how our griddle pans do Okay, let's go. So, get the shrimp. I'm going to save some. I'm going to show you a, a different technique. Get it nice and close to the fire. We want that skin to cr uh, crunch. It's a nice dramatic color across the exterior. I'm going to flip them once. Um, hopefully you get just a little bit of browning on that butter uh, and it's going to be pretty glorious. Let's have a little look at our Brussels sprouts. <laughs> All right, good. So have a little flip over. Despite what you might appear as though it's burnt, I can please rest assured that the inside is um, only beginning to sweeten. Um, Brussels sprouts are a very um, fibrous vegetable that do need that a little bit of slow cooking, but that color there, I assure you, um, is not burnt because, no, it's sweet. It's got a little char, and I think that adds to the, the character of this dish. And we're getting a little color on the bottom. All right, let's go. I love that, I love you. And then we have John McKenzie, he says, all right, we're going to cook scallops. Guys, I'm really, really excited that you've gone out and got some scallops. Scallops are something that I think people are intimidated to cook. Let's uh, please, please stay tuned for an extra couple minutes and I will show you a technique for getting stunning scallops every single time. Let's have a little look at these prawns. Oops, lost his head. I wasn't anticipating this poor little guy would be losing his head. Sorry, man. Mm -hmm. But you can see that the butter is starting to brown absolutely beautifully. Um, we're getting some garlic. Obviously, it's cooking. You're getting a nice sweetness to the garlic. It's going to probably need an extra 20 seconds, if that. As I said, it was very, very high cooking. If you're cooking this at home, simply uh, cook. Uh, you know, go out and get one of these. I'm sure if you can uh, lodge 
are something you find at Home Depot, at any kind of outdoor, um, outdoor living, outdoor um, equipment store. And these lodge pans are actually surprisingly cheap. Go onto Amazon, use it to your advantage. I mean, not every place is going to be open right now. So if you're interested in getting a little griddle pan, go out, uh, sorry, go into, click onto Amazon uh, and get one delivered the next day. All right. Ouch! First time. I don't often burn myself here, guys. I'm pretty confident, but... So, got some nice little heat, getting a little bit of smoldering in there. Look at these scallops. Might be a little left. Too much oil. Antonia! What up, chef? Hope you're staying positive, thinking of you. My hand is getting hot. Um, here we go. So that is just beautiful. Um, I think that's going to be the perfect temperature if we put a little thermometer into it. Rattling yeah, around at safe temperature. Good. Well, thank you. All right. Good. So, I mean, that could be served right now. As I said, it doesn't need long. Ideally, probably in hindsight, I would have even held off a little longer, and these are the last thing that you need to cook. But if that isn't the most sexy thing that you've seen this coronavirus season, Ooh, that's a big one. And I don't know what else, what is. Okay, um, I would love to have, you know, put the put the head on. Someone might <laughs> like to eat it. We got some weirdos out there. Okay. So what I've no noticed, it doesn't always happen, um, I wasn't anticipating, but we are getting a little hot spot around this side um, and I'm just going to use, you know, use that knowledge to rotate the pan on this side. Oh, well, they might just be around the peripheral. We are getting there across all of them, but I'm noticing a couple that aren't. So, you know, put those aside. Put the not so cooked ones, and I think we're going to get these out. So, putting those into our, our little honey dressing. It may be that you could just chuck all of them in if they're all done. I'm just going the slow way because a couple of them, we didn't get a nice temperature throughout the whole pan. That might just mean that if, you, if it doesn't, if you're noticing some hot spots, it might be an indication that you just haven't quite got the, the pan up to temperature uh, enough. So just leave it in the wood fire oven for a little bit longer. Or if you're cooking on the stove top, just leave it on for a little extra minute until you're getting a nice steaming in this way. Actually, you know what? These little fuckers were the only ones that didn't, so it's embarrassed me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, put those two little guys in. All right, let's cook our scallops. All right, so now that these are in the, the dressing, might use a little extra. Where are you? Here we go. Sorry about the dish towel, hon. <laughs> the smell of these is super delicious. I can add just a tiny little bit of salt. Carol. A little bit of salt. A little bit of salt, okay. Very nice. Always cook this way, but taste test, guys. If you're this far in the menu, do it with me. Pretty fucking delicious, actually. <laughs> mm. Mm. Very happy. All right, let's get our scallops. Here we do want to salt. Hey, 
hand sanitizer. So whenever you buy fresh scallops, <coughs> they'll have this little um, muscle still attached. Do you see that? Um, that's exactly where the, how convenient that I have a shell. It's where the, um, the scallop attaches to that uh, inside of the shell and stays protected. So you just want to peel that off, okay? It's just a little bit of a different texture to our scallops meat. So peel it off. Just a nicer, cleaner, um, more consistent pre uh, presentation. A little salt here, okay? We can do it on our hands. There are other two scallops. Say hello to your friends. Salt. Season it here. More generously. Do I have some butter? Do I use all my butter? I may have used all my butter. I might run into the kitchen and see if I have any. As I said, could use that. I don't want to burn the parsley. It's going to be a less, less than ideal presentation. You can go into the, the, uh, the, the walk in the walk in and see if there's any butter. I think we took it home, but. All right, so nice heat. Really important because if you're using any kind of stainless steel, use a, use a non-stick here um, if you're you know, beginning because it, it will ruin your scallops if you don't have quite enough heat. Get a, a hot pan. We're gonna start at the 12 o'clock position, okay? And we'll work our way around. Get it in. Pour yourself another glass of wine. What is that? Pour me some as well, please. How fast is it going no, to go, Chris? No, no, no. Yes. No. So we will leave that in there for about um, 30 seconds, okay? And I have um, a special delivery of butter, which thank you to my crew. I don't know why you had butter on hand. But that's good that you did. Uh, can I get another one of those? Okay. Really don't need too much. Um, I'm going to shave off about a tablespoon. We don't want to drown this little uh, cast iron or drown these little precious scallops in butter because you're not going to get the caramelization. You do want a little bit for flavor. Ideally here, if you had some thyme, uh, thyme and scallops together are magical pairing. Let's have a little look. Use a spoon. Ideally we're looking for a crust to have already formed on the bottom. Okay, we're getting there. I'm going to leave it in for a little bit longer. Um, when we, once we've got the crust, then we can add the butter. Okay, because it's once you've added the, the, the butter in the bottom of the pan, you really create a bath which braises if you will, is the only best way to describe it. If you, you, know, if you braise it, you're never going to get that golden uh, crust and the crunchiness that you desire, that you so desire. Um, here, I might add a little bit of rosemary in. I think that could be really nice. We're not going to eat it. Um, it's not going to be served with it, but it's going to um, add some fragrance to the butter um, and just give that nice little heat. Add uh, not heat, um, I guess just aroma and nice heartiness to these scallops. I wanted to try a different preparation of my scallops, if I can find, here we go, uh, my scallops. I wanted to use a different preparation for my shrimp. So I've got a little pan here. 
All right. Oh. We are really getting there now. Okay, we add, add, add that little butter in. Not a whole lot. You know, teaspoon. What you can do here, you add your pus, add your maybe. You wait for it to brown, and you can. Ideally, I probably would have got a slightly bigger pan, but I thought this would be cute. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to flip them. We don't want to be, you know, dancing with them throughout the whole cook. We just want to get, just leave them to cook. Just let them fucking cook. Don't touch them. Okay, rotate them. Creating a little butter fountain here. So you don't want to really cook this side. This is going to be the, the side that goes down first on the plate. And the side, obviously, that's going to show is that gloriously crunchy top that we've kept on the surface of the hot cast iron the whole time. Let's rotate them again. You'll be surprised at how long that butter holds up. It's actually out of the heat. There's obviously a good amount of residual heat in the cast iron to keep browning and cook, cooking that butter and keep browning the scallops. Um, but this is not going to burn. This butter is not going to burn anytime soon. Okay. One little extra flash of heat. You know, why? It's because we're going to color and really um, get some... Oh, it's the smell of the rosemary, the, the scallops. Scallops have such a Beautiful flavor is so undescribable. You can, um, sorry mate, you can, can't really can't describe it any other way. But <clears throat> the flavor that it gives to that butter, if you add a little extra butter and you're doing a bigger batch, the butter that results from that butter basing, don't throw that away. Okay, put it through the strainer, get rid of the rosemary, um, and serve that butter over the plate. It creates a really nice dramatic brown um, uh, look to the dish, and it also creates. Um, such an, an otherworldly taste. Yeah, you could use lemon. Oh, you're looking at the recipe list. Good call. Um, I haven't you decided to use the. What I'm trying to do is create a little bit of distance. Can you get in there? So, in there, I've created a little bit of distance. I want to put them on the charcoal. But that heat is going to amplify the um, the, the brown, uh, the, the you know the cooking of that butter. This is where, as I mentioned before, if you're cooking it, it's almost simu assimilating um, a barbecue. So it is going to drip off there, the butter, um, but it's the the taste that results from the cooking over those hot coals is just going to be incredible. Look at this! Oh my God! If that's not the most sexy scallop. Mm -hmm. You've been served. Can you smell it? Unfortunately you can't, but that is pretty darn tasty. Um, here, I'm not going to really cook it too much longer. I'm actually going to take it off, put on a little uh, paper towel. If I've got some, lovely team. Don't worry, I've got something else. A nice clean dish there. And get rid of the butter. You don't want to be serving it straight onto the plate, soggy and dripping in butter, okay? You want to finesse it. Just allow it to absorb some of that butter. Get rid of that. Okay. So who is cooking scallops at home? I, I hope you've had as much success as this. I consider this a success. I'm pretty chaffed with that. But have a little look at our uh, scallop, uh, our prawns. I'm going to see how we go on here. There we go. And uh, Colby, the, the white wine was to drink, mate, not to, not to, huh? Jody. Oh, Jody, Jody. The white wine is for drinking. Is my on, and the lemon is for serving. I didn't make that clear. No. If you were cooking in a pan, serious note, I was joking. Um, you can make this with a little bit of, a um, little bit of wine. You could even sp splash a little bit of wine into that. Um, 
that scallop dish, and it adds that, the nice florals that come with your favorite white wine, whether it's Riesling or Chardonnay. Um, the white wine is to collect all of the lovely flavor that's been left behind uh, in the bottom of the pan. So it's, it's really a deglazer, if you want to use a fancy term. And you can also, you know, once you've, if you're cooking these in butter, look, if you're cooking them in butter, the white wine, once it cooks, uh, once the butter cooks, the white wine is a lovely ooh, addition, creating a really nice sauce, which you can just lap up with the toast. All right, we are pretty much done. These ones were for fun, um, just to to show you what I would be doing if you know, the, you know, showing you how lovely it looks uh, and the color that is intensified through cooking it over hot flames such as a grill. So that's what I wanted to do here. Um, whether you've done it at home, doesn't matter. Anyway, here we are. Show me your pictures, Jody, and other people at home. Here we go. Have a little look. These are pretty big scallops, so. Showing you whether it's done. You want, this is perfect. You want the scallop to be beautiful and white. It's not, you know, an undercooked scallop is gonna be more translucent. You're it'll almost clear or opaque. This has got a consistent white color. I don't wanna break it completely. I wanna serve it, obviously. But that is perfect. And I hope you have the same success at home. That is served medium. It's a medium scallop. And that is how you'd find them at your finest restaurants in the world, if I might say so myself. Oh, my gosh. And I almost did what I said I didn't want to do, which was serve this butter. Okay, so that butter is, I can smell it right now. Tony, are we working on smell vision? Smell a vision? Right. All right. So, you know, that just takes your dish up to the next level. Um, if you're cooking scallops by themselves, uh, consider some parsnip puree or some artichoke puree, uh, cauliflower puree, and what you would do is cook it in cream and then uh, puree it in a food processor. Uh, strain it through a fine, fine mesh strainer and that the resulting puree is silken in texture and such a nice complement for these uh, nice delicate scallops. So we're pretty, pretty good, I think. Well, we had a zucchini, which we could do if you are interested. No, we won't bother. Lovely people, I'm gonna serve to you here. A couple of little extra microgreens, which we've got from Long Meadow Ranch, if you're in Napa. Saturday Farmer's Market, um, Long Meadow Ranch have these beautiful little micro herbs which add a little extra color to your dish. And fennel reminds us that we're having something delicate and, and refined. I'm gonna get my uh, other prawns out. Sorry, I'm gonna run away for a second. I don't want them to overcook. Lucky our heat has died down significantly. So you might even consider doing uh, two, two takes. This one is a little bit more delicate, a little bit perhaps more sweeter. This one um, a bit more rustic, a little bit more, you know, some serious attitude. But yeah, if that's not, if that doesn't get you going, guys, tune out. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Find another station. Okay. There we go. Um, Finish with a little bit of olive oil. Sweetness, a little grassiness. Brussels sprouts next to it too. Yeah, and the Brussels sprouts, which are still nice and warm. I hope. You could even serve these. If you're at a party, you might even consider serving your scallop on one of these beautiful little dishes, which I got from Osprey. If you're interested in entertaining at home and you want to serve it on one of these beautiful little dishes, He has a little collection, 
he sells these lovely shells, which I think is a serious turning point, a talking point as well. Uh, we might add a little lime to freshen this dish. Or a towel, if I have one. I don't want to use that towel. Here we go. How are we going, guys? Please send in your um, your live photos of how we're going, how we're getting through this dish together. I hope that you've you've absolutely nailed it. It would be give me such great satisfaction. Darren and Michael both say well done and that it's beautiful. Oh, thank you, Darren and Michael. Michael, the lovely people. So I mean, I'm going to crunch one over. Get in here, Tony. Get in here with me. Um, a little over that. I don't want to saturate him. Can we get a knife and fork, lovely folks? No links. Did we melt our GoPro? We may very well have. <laughs> Have we got some knives and forks? I can go grab them. Oh, I'm sorry. What I would love to, well, we can still do it. What's We've got up? some um, cranberries, dried cranberries. These are cheap as anything. To this nice, sweet, and spicy, and um, seriously exciting Brussels sprout preparation. These little, these little uh, cranberries are just going to add a little jubilant burst of sweetness. Um, yeah, and this is something I would serve at Thanksgiving time, which cranberries, um, no better time throughout the year to serve cranberries. A lovely festive flavor, get some cranberry sauce. So it's got crunch, it's got sweetness, it's got heat, it's got serious character. I Thank like you, the color too. That's awesome. You can finish it off with some extra of these micro herbs if you wanted to. Micro herbs just amplify anything. Ampl um, sorry. If you want to take your brunch to the next level, go and get some micro herbs. If you're a single man, uh, go and get some micro herbs and impress um, the lady you've got your eyes on or whoever. Yeah. Treat those around you with the love that you... and the power of food. There you go, folks. Wow. Uh, can we get a taste test? I'm going to serve this to you, Tony, okay. from six feet away. Yep. It's a tough job. <laughs> Taste testing. Maybe the scallop yeah, first, or the... I um, I, I would, I would, I would recommend, I would recommend some a uh, little oyster fork if you like to uh, for these prawns, which you can you know almost pick up the the the, um, the prawn, and then hopefully, I mean you can just go like that, you can peel it off. So these are the ones that were right on the fire. You can split them. These ones were the ones that surrounded the fire. The, the char around that. Oh. The garlic, the heat, the parsley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's rustic. Mm. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's got <clears throat> carrot. <clears throat> choking on. <laughs> <clears throat> Being reminded of my <laughs> 10 year old pranks. Oh my god. Joking to death here on live cam. <laughs> but. Wow. It looks as good as it tastes. I wish I could, I wish I could smell it. You could. You At did least. a really good job there. All right. And taste one of these scallops, which is yeah, my knife those and fork. fluffy scallops. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Here you bud. Cheers, guys. To you at home. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you you've got yeah. last questions, please, please. Um, Dial them in. This My is your opportunity to, to ask. Home. Nope, I cannot make any promises. Give so no, some so wine glasses, and I'll give our crew some some Australian Riesling. There's your wine. Mm. Wow. Oh, the fennel's nice. The little fennel's I nice. Really like the fennel. You know, it's like kind of like uh, licoricey exactly. kind of taste with the right butter. 
well. Cheers to you, Tony, and our team for making this all come together. Cheers to you, most importantly. Thank you guys for Lovely watching. Lovely folks at home. Um, we care about you more than our team. I care about you more than my team, um, except my beautiful fiance. Sorry, guys. <laughs> next uh, week. Get in here. Next week, everybody. Um, you know, we'll uh, we'll send out all the information through Facebook again, and we'll get you all uh, squared away with what we're cooking and what time and all that. But um, thank you, Tim, for coming. Cheers. This was awesome. I'll cheers with my <laughs> cheers. Use scallop. scallop. Scallop cheers. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope. Uh, please uh, keep the questions coming. If you think about something in the next couple of days, um, please. Uh, oh, sorry. Please come and visit me on my handle on Instagram, which is Chef Tim Newman. Okay, Chef Tim Newman. I'm going to be rolling out a, a bucket load of content to keep you creating gorgeous dishes like this at home. Um, and I promise you, I will be um, tapping into my messages and fielding all of your questions um, that you've ever wanted to know. Give me some recommendations. It's a big initiative that I'm trying to um, encourage you to be interactive with my videos. Leave me some ideas and recommendations on what you would like to cook, um, what you've always been intimidated by. How the Brussels sprouts? I promise yeah. you that is my most important thing. Um, we are kindly accepting a small donation if you like. Uh, you know, to, to bet for me, I'm, I'll be completely transparent. I'm out of work, um, but it's not a big priority for me to um, to get you know to receive any of your lovely donations. But um, come on over to my channel, and my you know you can repay me in sending me your photos of what you create from my recommend uh, from our interactive cooking. So. Cheers, I hope that you're staying well at home. Um, it is a scary time, please stay positive, um, eat well. As a nutritionist and a dietitian, um, I couldn't be more of an advocate of, of, of the power of food to keep you, um, you know, your mental um, you know, positivity yeah. up. Um, for me, it's a, it's a vice, cooking is, is enormous. Um, so I hope that you can uh, join in my excitement for great food like this. Thank you again for joining, we'll see you next week. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.